Mercury Wonder Show. Tonight we've pitched our tents at the 6th Bearing Group, Bearing Division of the Air Transport Command at Long Beach, California. This is the home of the 6th Bearing Group, and my observations lead me to believe that they've really got some devil-may-care pilots at this base. When they come in for a landing out here, the only way they can get them to pay any attention to the windsock is to put Betty Grable's leg in it. <laughs> they took me for a ride in the bomber this afternoon for an added thrill. I came down by parachute wasn't exactly a planned jump. Some mad wag had painted gentlemen on the Bombay door. <laughs> now, now, on with the show. Presenting at this time, tonight's special attraction of glamorous uh, star... Uh, glamorous star who's been chosen by the ferry pilots as the girl they'd most like to be grounded with, Marjorie Reynolds. Thank you. Hello, Orson. Hello, Marjorie. Oh, yes. Uh, hello, Marjorie. You know, Marjorie, <laughs> I've seen you in most of your pictures, Holiday Inn, Dixie, up in Mabel's room, and I've always had the feeling that I've seen you before. Well, you probably have, Orson. Before I went into pictures, I used to be a model. My face was on streetcar ads and magazines and billboards everywhere. Hmm. Oh, now I remember. Yes. <laughs> I've painted many a mustache on you. <laughs> I hate myself. Now, for it, of course, let's get back to script. You know, Orson, I've met quite a few of the boys here. One of the pilots <laughs> asked me to go out with him. <laughs> Oh, that's your line. At least I hope it is. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, Orson, one of the pilots asked me to go out with him later and watch relieved. night maneuvers. I beg your pardon? Well, he wanted me to watch night maneuvers. I didn't know they had night maneuvers. Oh, yes, yes. Some of their best training comes after dark. <laughs> but these ferry pilots really do a wonderful job, Marjorie. I know they've flown our wonder show to quite a few out-of-the-way camps to entertain. One flight... I'll never forget that flight. We had... W.C. Fields with us. What a trip that was. We flew blind all the way. <laughs> the first time I've ever seen a pilot make a 3.2 landing. <laughs> uh, you'll have a chance, though, Marjorie, to meet a lot of the boys later. We've all been invited to the service club for a little snack after the broadcast. Well, I'll be there, Orson, but uh, I won't have anything to eat. I've got to watch my figure. Oh, forget your figure. There's no sense in all of us watching it. <laughs> Music lot. You know, a lot of mothers have been writing in asking what their boys in the camps are doing when their leaves are too short to come home. After making a survey, we're happy to turn in the following report. It's title, What a Typical G.I. Soldier Does on Leave, or It Shouldn't Happen to an M.P. They seen a luxurious one-room suite in a Hollywood hotel. As we... As we look in on our soldier, he is pressing his fatigue. I like New York in June. How about you? I... Come in. Just a minute. I'm coming. I'll open the door. Oh, hello. I live down the hall, and I was wondering... Oh, I'm afraid you've got the wrong room. <laughs> when my iron was getting good and hot. <laughs> Door open. I'd like to explain. The hotel manager told me you're on a three-day pass and that you might be lonesome. Oh, I'm never lonesome as long as I've got my army field manual with me. <laughs> I'm up to the chapter on military courtesy, all about who to salute and who to... It's very fascinating. <laughs> Oh, I thought maybe you'd like a date tonight. I've got tickets to a show, and, and then maybe we could go for a moonlight drive in my car. 
Gee, no, I'm afraid not. You see, I had plans for tonight. Another and, uh, day? No, I got some new stamps today. I just can't wait to put them in my album. Oh, well, uh, maybe you'd like me to come in and chat with you for a while. Oh, I guess that'd be all right. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Have to keep that door open. It's a rule of the hotel. Very good rule, too. What do you mean? Well, you see, when a soldier comes in for a furlough, he wants rest and quiet. And if you close the door... There's a fellow employed by the hotel who knocks on the door and says, Are there any girls in there? It's very disturbing. I don't get it. Well, I don't fully understand it myself. <laughs> I think he's recruiting for the wax. <laughs> oh, well, uh, of course, if you like, we could spend the evening here. What could we do? I haven't even got a deck of cards. <laughs> Say, Typical, isn't it? Say, are you bucking for a good conduct ribbon? <laughs> what? Yeah, are there any, uh, are there any girls in here? I beg your pardon? Are there any girls in here? Please, the door is open, and would you kindly stop knocking on my forehead? Oh, sorry. You know, soldiers... Oh, soldier, you're awfully cute. Come on over here. I'm comfortable where I am. Oh, now let's get organized. Are we just going to sit around like this all evening? Oh, I have been a fool. I haven't had a girl around for six months, and now you're here, and you're so lovely, and... Well, there's something you can do for me. Anything. What is it? Will you finish pressing my fatigue? <laughs> If you knew Susie like I know Susie, did she have to take a back seat? She looked terrible. She had no glamour. She had no gleam. No one took a shine to Susie. Then she heard of mobile gloss and mobile wax. Susie's a car, you see, and boy, is she the heady of the highways now. Moral, regardless of how old it is, your car can be a beauty. And your mobile gas dealer has exactly what it takes. Two beauty specialties. Mobile wax and mobile gloss. Mobile gloss comes first. It removes the dust and road grime from the surface of your car and restores the... Next, you get a good, tough coat of mobile wax that protects the finish from exposure, brings it up to mirror brightness. Sparkle, you whistle with pride. Honestly, if you knew how your car could look like I know how your car could look, oh, oh, would you drive in for mobile gloss and mobile wax at the sign of the Flying Red Horse. Thanks, John. And now, on with the Mercury Wonder Show. On the next platform, see Austin the Magnificent. He performs the most baffling illusions of the century. This show's going on, soldier. Don't miss it. Come on in. Oh, I don't want to. Why not, soldier? Don't you want to see Orson soar a woman in half? Mr. Owen's been out with a girl in six months. Why should I go in there and watch him waste one? <laughs> The lovely lady is in one piece. How do you feel, Martha? Fine, Orson, but for a minute there, I thought I'd have to sing a duet. One Martha Tilton is good enough for me. How about you, fellas? Hear the music whisper, echoes of romance. Cuddle on my shoulder, hold me while we it's a moment tender, now the spell is cast, maybe you'd surrender, but you move too fast, take it easy, take it easy, don't you know it's more romantic when the dance is slow, take it easy, take it easy, what's the good of feeling high when all the lights are low, take it easy, take it easy. We've got lots of time ahead of us, the night is young. Take it easy, take it easy. Don't you know this music should be swayed instead of swung? Take your time, take your time, dance with these. Take your time, take your time, slow if you please. Take it easy, honey, take your time right now. Show you how 
Don't you know you're not supposed to make a rumble jump? Take it easy, take it easy. If you don't, I feel that our romance will hit a bump. Take it easy, take it easy. Don't you know it's time for romance when the music's sweet? Take it easy, take it easy. You should really try to make your heart control your feet. Take your time, baby, jump as easy. Take your time, boy, slow as you please. Take it easy. One of my favorite radio programs is Suspense, and the story they've been doing for the last couple of weeks is really a killer. It seems one Dr. Corey, a famous brain surgeon, has discovered a method of keeping the human brain alive after death. In the course of his fiendish experiments, Corey acquires the brain of William H. Donovan, a Wall Street tycoon. This brain very shortly gains control over Dr. Corey's brain, and when this happens, Corey thinks and talks like Donovan sort of a Jekyll and Hyde situation. By way of restaking our claim in the scream and shudder department, the Mercury offers now its own black market version of that rip-snorting spine chiller, Donovan's Brain. This is the man in black with the performance of Marjorie Reynolds as Janice and Orson Welles as Dr. Ronald Corey. We again hope to keep you in... As I sit outside my laboratory door, writing under the heading Experiment 87, this final entry in my casebook, you know, I'm a sort of a fat Ronald Coleman. now that these are the last words I shall ever write upon this earth. July 13th. Today I sat in a radio studio and listened to Niles K. Donovan, the well-known radio announcer, tantalizing, tasty, toasted, and guaranteed rust-proof. And now, friends, for the details of our new $8 million prize contest. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> At that very moment, a contest fiend, driven frantic by Donovan's persuasiveness, rushed to the stage, tore off the top of Donovan's head, and mailed it to the sponsor. An old joke, but an extraordinary piece of luck for me. By sending in seven soap labels, together with 35 cents to cover the cost of wrapping and mailing, I gained possession of Donovan's brain, the living, pulsing brain of the greatest radio announcer ever to read a commercial. That night in my laboratory tree... I was joined by my associate and colleague, another mad scientist, old Dr. Frugelheiser. I say, Frugelheiser, what have we got here? You know what we got here, Gory. It's the brain. The brain of Donovan, the radio announcer? Just as we planned, Doctor. The brain is alive here in this jar. We are giving it alive. Tell me more. I don't know what you're saying, but it sounds good. <laughs> but it's so simple. You see, the brain, when functioning, gives off in with a decimal electrical impulses. Oh, yes. I have hooked the encephalo groove up to a small amplifying system. The brain impulses can actually be heard. Here, I turn it on. <laughs> First time I ever saw a brain with a bald head. <laughs> I, I think we should explain that Donovan's brain is being played by Charlie Cantor in a jar of alcohol. <laughs> Too much alcohol. The brain, ladies and gentlemen, is boiled. 
You know, of course, Corey, that those oscillations of the brain are known as delta waves. Delta waves? They maintain a steady rhythm. Any resemblance to the delta rhythm, boys, is purely coincidental. <laughs> but, Doctor... <laughs> I didn't think that was funny when we wrote it, but... But, Doctor, what please from these experiments is the purpose? Well, don't you see, Frugelheiser, that brain can think. Ask it a question. Anything at all. All right, I ask a question. Look, brain, brain... Too much is do too much. Do. That's all. <laughs> all right, an oh. accent, yes, but who much, no. <laughs> how? Again, how, 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 I'm a German Indian. Now he's an Indian. <laughs> how much is do and do? No, 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 not that way, this way. Donovan. <laughs> Brain, old boy. <laughs> how much is two and uh, two? Two, uh... And two. Eighty-seven dollars in a set of encyclopedias to Dr. Prober. <laughs> this is exasperating. Come, come, brain, try it again. Two and two. Oh, shucks. Tilt. Oh. Oh. There you are, Janice, my darling wife, Janice, my lovely, my gorgeous, my beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. It's amusing, but confusing. Oh, dear, dear, it's awfully warm in here. I think I'll take my coat off. Oh. Put your coat back on, dear. The brain is blowing its top. <laughs> and now I've got work to do. Out, out, out. Everyone out. Please leave me. Wait, Ronald, darling. Don't you see what this is doing to you? What do you mean? Well, talking to that radio announcer's brain all the time. His brain talking to you. It's changed you somehow. Nonsense. I haven't changed. Oh, you have, Ronald. Well, you used to love to sit home with me and listen to the radio all evening. Yes, but I don't like it anymore. What good is radio? Sometimes you have to listen to 15 or 20 minutes of entertainment before you get even an teetsy weensy commercial. <laughs> and that's the best part of radio. Oh, commercial. Sure, 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 sure. <coughs> that's what I like. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Last night, as I entered the house... Darling, where have you been? Why, I just went down to the corner to get some razor blades. Oh, well, dinner will be ready in a few minutes, dear. Fine. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'll just mm -hmm. run upstairs and shave with those hollow ground genuine green blades which glide over your whiskers and make you face happy. And if I don't get 100% shaving satisfaction, I get double my money back in a floor lamp. Sure, 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 sure. Oh. Sure, sure. Oh, stop it, please. Sure, sure. What's the trouble, dear? Oh, I can't stand it any longer. The same thing day after day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday? Thursday? Whenever you're thirsty, try a bottle of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Sure, 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 sure. Oh, Ronald, the brain is growing stronger than you. Darling, how can you talk like that? Oh, Ronald, if only we could be as we used to be. I love you, Ronald. You're more attractive than ever. Take me in your arms. Hmm... My sweet. Now, this isn't supposed to be funny. This is a highly emotional scene. Say, take me in your arms again, please. We get back. Oh, pool. you're so attractive. Take me in your arms. My sweet. <laughs> you never should have said I was attractive. That's what tips the whole thing. <laughs> my, my sweet. Nothing will ever come between us. Kiss me! Kiss me! Donovan, get back in that jar. <laughs> oh, that's the last straw. Ronald, you must make your choice now. Choose between that brain, that radio announcer's brain, and me. When you've decided, contact me. I must have time to think. Janice wants me to destroy the brain, should I? Don't be a chump. Why destroy the brain? Destroy Janice. Destroy Janice? Sure, sure, sure. It's easy. It's easy. Put her to sleep first. How could I do that? Simple, very simple. Run down to your neighborhood druggist and get a box of TC sleeping pills. <laughs> they come in four delicious flavors. Cat nap, knockout, no twitch, and pooped. <laughs> There's no time. Well, there are other...
other ways to put her to sleep. Send her to see Jane Eyre. No, no, that's too severe. <laughs> Murder is bad enough, but torture, no. Listen to me. Go into that room. Sneak up behind her. I can't. Don't interrupt. I will. You won't. I can't. You must. I shan't. You shall. No, no. Sure, sure. Hip, hip. Hooray! <laughs> I won't hear any more. Yes, I will, too. Sorry, Brain. I take it back. Brain, Brain, please talk to me. Brain, I didn't mean it. Corey the Brain, Corey the Brain, come in, Brain. Over. What's that, Brain? You have what? A plan? A plan? What is the plan, Brain? Finished? You want a half-hour radio show with only three minutes of entertainment, all the rest commercial? Brain, you must be mad. I'm going to destroy you. It's no use, Brain. This is the finish. Oh, wait. You destroyed the brain. Yes, Janice, and now I'm free. Do you hear me? Free. I'll never again be controlled by that monster Donovan. Oh, my sweet. This makes me so happy. It does? Yes, it does. Does. Does everything. It makes your dishes sparkle. Your kitchen work easier. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. You know, everybody's singing that new number, Milkman, Keep Those Bottles Quiet. And I'm singing my own sequel, Motorist, Keep That Chassis Quiet. Frankly, if you wait until the chassis of your car begins to squeak and creak, if you wait until your car has got the rheumatism, that means wear already has begun on the vital parts. So keep that chassis mobile lubricated. Ward off wear and friction with America's favorite greases, sturdy, rugged, mobile greases. Mobile lubrication is no ordinary grease job. It includes specific types of mobile greasers, each type made for its particular chassis fitting. Mobile lubrication brings you three rewards, three big rewards. One, it gives you smooth and quiet riding. Two, it helps you get full gasoline mileage. Three, it lengthens the life of your car. Worth it? When it may be years before you'll get a new car, what do you think? So stop in and say, mobile lubrication. You know where, at the sign of the flying red horse. And now our Mercury All-Star Jazz Combination offers for your delectation and kicks a special reading of Tiger Rag.
John Gillespie McGee, Jr. was an RCAF flyer who was killed in action three years ago at the age of 19. He wrote this poem, which is now in the Library of Congress, which I'd like to read to you. Oh, I have flipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept height with easy grace where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent, lifting mind, I've trod the high, untrusted sanctity of space, put out my hand and touch the face of God. Good night now. We want to thank the men and officers, and particularly Brigadier General William H. Tunner, Commanding General of the Faring Division, Colonel Andrew B. Cannon, Commanding Officer, Sixth Faring Group, Major Terry Hunt, and Captain William Novak, Special Service Officers of the Sixth Faring Group, Faring Division, Air Transport Command at Long Beach, California. I'd also like to thank Bill Spear, Director of Suspense, and Kurt Seward Mack, who wrote Donovan's Brain, for letting us lampoon what was a very wonderful radio drama. I'd also like to apologize to Orson Welles, who appeared in the original production of Donovan's Brain and gave a grand performance. Grand, grand. I, I'd like to go on about that, but my time's up. So please join us again next week. Till then, my sponsors, the makers of mobile gas and mobile oil, all of us in the Mercury Theater remain, as always, obediently yours. The makers of mobile gas and mobile oil invite you to listen next week. Same time, same station to Orson Welles. Mr. Welles' guest is Lynn Barry. Marjorie Reynolds appears in the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of the story of Dr. Watson, John McIntyre speaking, CBS, Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>